Hi, my name is Daniel Domfand, and today we'll be creating a problem factory for our web API. When creating web APIs, we create endpoints that people can use to interact with our web service. Often these endpoints will have a parameter that we can enter as part of our request. These parameters that someone can enter are what we want to make sure we validate on. We don't want to be passing around input values that we are not expecting. We want to gracefully handle the invalid values. We could easily handle invalid inputs inside our controller by adding a check and returning a 400 bad request. While this might be acceptable for certain projects, often you create web APIs with one or more endpoints that need validating. Then creating a problem factory could be the way to go. A problem factory holds different details of what a problem might be. The details can include, but are not limited to, title, status, detail. When the problem is hit, it returns these details back to the person making the request. It allows us to return more detail than simply returning a bad request. While you could return all this detail inside your controller, as you can imagine, your controller starts to get quite large. It's starting to do too much. This is one of the reasons you want to split the problem out into its own classes. In this tutorial, I'm going to use a web API that I previously created in one of my other tutorial videos. If you're unsure on how to create a web API or how to interact with a third party API, then have a look in my description below where I have links on how to create these. Okay, so let's get started writing the code. So first of all, we're going to have to make the search criteria nullable. If we didn't make it nullable, then the request that we made without any kind of criteria in it would not reach this endpoint. It would think that this endpoint didn't match what we we're trying to find. So by putting the question mark here, we make search criteria nullable, which means that we can uh, pass in a null or an empty string into this route. Now that we've made it nullable, we're going to start creating uh, the check to see if the search criteria is null or empty. Let's start by writing if string dot is null or empty, and we'll pass in the parameter search criteria. Now we're going to use wishful programming here. Wishful programming means that we're going to create classes and methods as if they're there, and then we'll create them as we need them. So we'll say return from problem. underscore problem factory Okay, so this is what the check is going to look like, that if the search criteria is null or empty, it will come into this if statement and then be passed into the problem. So we're going to create um, our from problem method, which is above here first, in our controllers. It's going to have a return type of I action result. And this is going to return as a status code. It's going to return as a status code along with our problem that we're just about to create. So let's create a field um, that's going to initialize the problem factory uh, down here. My right, problem factory is the interface that we are just about to create. And we'll initialize that in the constructor. So as you can see, 
We don't have an iProblem factory yet, but that's what we're going to create next. So let's head along and create a folder. Name problem. And inside the folder, we're going to create an interface, iProblem factory, a class, problem factory, and another class, problem. Let's create problem first, and I'll explain what's going to be inside it. So new item class problem and we're going to create three properties in here. So a shortcut to create a property by the way is PROP and double tab and it will give you the um, construction of it. So we're going to have a type of string and we're going to call this title Prop double tab again. We're going to here call this details, and this is also going to be string. This is going to be HTTP status code. The name of status code, and these are the pro uh, properties that we're going to send back if a user runs into one of our problems. Now we're going to create another interface. We're going to create an interface here. The interface is going to be called iProblemFactory. And we're going to make that public. And we are also going to create another class called ProblemFactory. We're going to attach the iProblemFactory here. Okay, so now we can start actually creating the problems inside our problem factory. We're going to start off with the one that we need first, which is going to be the missing payload. So if we say public, the return type is going to be the problem, and we'll call this missing payload. And we're going to say return new problem. And open it out and as you can see these are the properties that we created before in our problem class so let's start start off by saying title first and saying payload is not well formed or was not provided second thing it's status code and this is going to be a bad request and third and final, the details. So just some more information that you want to pass into, uh, pass to the user. So using the string interpolation, put a dollar sign, and then we're going to say missing data with value, and we'll close that off. Now at the moment we only have one uh, method inside our problem factory, but often when you're creating a problem factory, you're going to be creating more than one different type of problem. So while we'll only be implementing one problem at the moment, I'll show you what I mean by creating more kind of problems. Let's say that we uh, might have an unexpected error, which would be a type of which would be an HTTP status code of 500. Then let's create something like that now. So we would have problem, unexpected error, pass in a string value, and again we'd say return new problem just like before and then we fill in the details again just like before so there was an error processing your request and the status code and this is going to be a 500 which is internal server error and details now the details that you put in here are, are up to you it's whatever makes sense to the application that you're creating but as you can see now we've got two different problems that we can pass back to the user with some more information than we had before Heading back to our 
I problem factory, we want to put the public methods that we've created in the problem factory inside here. So we are going to say problem missing payload value and unexpected error. Okay, great. Now we'll head back to our Giphy controller, and as you can see, it now wants to import the reference. So we'll say yes to that. Excellent. So the final thing we need to do is we need to add our iProblemFactory interface and Problem Factory to our configure services in the startup.cs class. So let's do that now. Services dot add singleton and our iProblemFactory and our Problem Factory. This is so that um, classes that need to use the methods inside the problem factory have access to it. We're dependency injecting these into our classes. Okay, let's save all this. And let's build. Everything looks to have passed, so now let's run it and see if we get what we expect. Now that's running, let's grab the local host and the port, and I'm going to switch over to Postman, and we're going to enter the URL of our Giphy API, and first of all we're going to enter a one with a search criteria, and we, as we expect we get back the URL for the GIF. Now we're going to take away that, URL, um, that search criteria, and we should expect our problem factory to be returned, and we do. We've been returned our problem factory with the properties that we created, title, details, and status code. This gives a lot more information when a user passes in something or does something incorrectly to interact with your API. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.